Hi guys and welcome to the Rochdale vs Sunderland match review. Now before we get into any discussions of the game or any reviewing at all, I'm absolutely buzzing with my score predictions so far this season. Haven't they been absolutely insane? I've got three correct score predictions out of the opening four Sunderland uh, League One games. And yesterday's prediction, or when I predicted uh, the game, I predicted the goal scorers as well, which I don't usually do. And I got them right as well, which I'm just absolutely buzzing with. I'm going to start predicting 4 or 5 nil Sunderland every game and just see if it actually happens. But yeah, so we did win by two goals to one with McGeady and White on the score sheet, which I predicted. So I should probably take up gambling. But going into the game, we went pretty much unchanged bar the one. Um, bar, bar the one change, which was White Q come in for the injured McNulty. So we had John McLaughlin in goal. We had the four across the back with uh, Conor McLaughlin on the left, Luke O'Nine on the right. We had Willis and Ozturk remaining as the central defensive partnership. In the middle, we had Power and Ledbitter on the right, Gooch on the left, McGeady, and up top, Maguire and Charlie White. Now, first and foremost, I just want to say, Rochdale fans, you, you, if you play anything like you did, um, against us, it, it, you're going to be fine for the rest of the season, absolutely fine because they, they look brilliant, uh, you absolutely look brilliant uh, their style and brand of football was excellent um, they were playing it out from the back quite a lot and they were so comfortable and even the centre-backs who would come and pick it up from goal kicks, they would just run straight through our midfield and that was quite frustrating because I felt like Ledbitter and Power were incredibly, incredibly weak um, against Rochdale and uh, like, like I say, they pick it up from their own third and they would just run straight through our midfield and Ledbetter and Power are nowhere to be seen and they just bomb forward and then spray it out wide and whip balls in. And I think for the majority of the time we did deal with it quite well defensively between Willis and Ozturk. It, it, they were very, very good and they were getting uh, balls away and stuff like that. But uh, McLaughlin did have to make some some really good saves and Rochdale did play some really good football and I feel like we just didn't really get going at all uh, throughout the game really. I, I feel like, you know... I feel like that what we've got correctly so far is our two centre backs. I think that's fine. I think we still need to, which, which I did say in the preview. I would have liked to see Dobson in there alongside Power or alongside Ledbetter. Either way, because in games like this, away from home, a, a team that are so possession based, you want someone with a bit more tenacity and a bit more energy and a bit more legs on him. And Dobson fits the bill. So I feel like putting Power and Ledbetter in there, we're shooting ourselves in the foot from the off really, and they were just far too weak for them really. Um, they just didn't really gain control of that midfield or uh, control of the game at all, Ledbetter and Power, which is something which is what they're there for essentially to do, or to at least stop them uh, uh, as much as humanly possible from gaining control of the game, and they just couldn't do it. Um, so like I say, possession-based football, it, we, they were really good. Uh, we, we did break here and there, and we did look all right. When we did really go for it, you could see it was like a, a switch just flicked, and we're like, oh shit, we can actually attack ourselves. We didn't look that bad. We didn't look that bad, and I'm not going to complain too much about it. It's just we don't do it often enough. It's like we don't have the confidence to just bomb forward and get at them. We are so specific and particular with times and waiting around for an opportunity to present itself. It needs to be on a plate for us to get forward. And I think if we just had the confidence to just go forward as much as humanly possible, I think we'd be absolutely fine. It, like I say, it's just frustrating that we just don't do it often enough. But we did break the deadlock. Was it against the run of play? Maybe. Uh, but it was probably our one and only real good quality passing move throughout the game. Link, link up play, lovely between like, the likes of Gooch, Maguire in there. Then it was eventually put over to uh, McGeady on the left-hand side. One touch and buries it beautifully in that bottom left-hand corner. And it's 1-0. And then the equalise. Uh, pretty much five minutes later, passing move down the left-hand side. Uh, I, I feel like defensively, our shape uh, across the back four was okay for the goal. It was it was Power and Ledbetter who were nowhere to be seen. It was pulled back to the edge, edge of the box. There is no one near him. Granted, we could maybe step out a yard or two uh, to, to press him uh, for the centre-backs, but it's really ideally where our central midfielder should be. There's no one there. It's pulled back to him, and, and he's put it in the back of the net from the edge of the box. He just had so much time and space, and that was shocking. That was really what was shocking to me. Um, so we go into half-time, and it is one all. Now, one of the big things I will criticise, which is harsh because he's out of position, but it's Conor McLaughlin. Conor McLaughlin, for me, yeah, he's naturally a right back. He's been playing at left back, but he was such a liability, and he has been for the majority of the game so far this season. And I think Rochdale could have quite easily got themselves three or four goals due to Conor McLaughlin's mistakes had Rochdale not been so wasteful. It, it could have easily happened. 
any ball that was played down that left-hand side, he was completely missing it. He was out of position. It was almost as bad as Hume on the opening day. or a, it, it was really, really bad. Really poor. Whenever he get the ball, you know, it, most times he would give the ball away. He just looks like he's so out of his depth and his confidence isn't there in that position, which, is, again, is understandable. Um, but, yeah, and he was just giving them so much space down there, right, and our left-hand side. Uh, at, at, and they were just getting ample time to cross the ball, do what the hell they want on their right-hand side. It, 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 it was terrible, absolutely terrible to watch. And I think if that was you know, solidified on that left side, it would look a lot cleaner and a lot safer at the back. But whilst we've got that weak link there, it's going to be a massive, massive problem. And plays with, you know, with no offence to Rochdale, with a bit better ability, with a higher quality, it, we will get punished. And I think, you know... It's something we have to look at, and I think we are looking at, but we have to get a left back in ASAP so, so quickly. We can't rely on Conor McLaughlin there all season because eventually we're going to get figured out and we're going to get absolutely battered. Um, but we did eventually make it 2 1, and it was Charlie White who, to be fair, had yet another cracking game. The man just looks like he's brimming with confidence, and I've said this over the last two or three match reviews now that we've seen him play. Uh, he's winning everything in the air. I mean, Last season when we did see him, I know he was shaking off an injury and he did get injured early doors, but he did look like he was a player really lacking with confidence. And even though he is or was supposed to be this big brute, he wasn't really putting himself about last season. And we didn't, and that's what we didn't really like, you know, because we thought, you know, he's not class with his feet, he's not class with this, that, and the other. And he's not the most technically gifted player, but we thought we'd we'd find ourselves a target man, and he wasn't really playing that role. Uh, for a good chunk of last season but this season he's winning everything in the air he was bullying defenders and he just gives us another outlet and another option I think if we had McNulty up there with him last night I think we probably would have been a bit better because McNulty would have pressed that back line just as much as White did because White really was pressing that back line as well and it would have given us more of an attacking threat I do believe uh, so yeah it, it, the ball was played over the top oh sorry it was pulled um, it, it was crossed from the byline from Luko 9 it fell to McGeady at the the opposite byline, he knocked it back down for White, who took a touch and he's managed to sort of scramble it over the line for 2-1. And then we pretty much just held on for dear life because uh, they were just throwing everything at us. A, a few world, world-class saves from uh, from John McLaughlin. Some of them pretty much one of the keeper. One of them was a header that was a, it looked like it was just floating into the top corner. And McLaughlin had not only saved it, but he caught it and held onto it as well. It was just something you'd see in FIFA or something like that, or some kind of video game. But it, it, he had a class, class game. And if it weren't for him, we could have easily lost that game 5 or 6 2. And if it weren't for maybe a lack of finishing or a lack of you know making the most of the chances for Rochdale, it, we could have lost that game quite easily. Um, but all in all, I think, you know. It's all well and good saying that you know we've got the result. It's a brilliant result away from home. Rochdale aren't a bad side, not to be underestimated. It's a very good result. I think performance-wise, it's something that we that needs to be improved massively and drastically. I think we can't have another season of us saying all season long, you know, oh we haven't even got out of first gear yet, or wait wait for us to get to the next gear because last season we were saying that for six months. We were still January and we were, and even though we we're in a good position in the league come that time of the year. We were playing terrible football, and we were but we were scraping results. We were absolutely scraping, like we kind of did last night against Rochdale. And um, but we can't keep saying that. We we need to start putting teams away comfortably because otherwise we become reliant on these lacklustre performances and just expect wins. Which I think was a big downfall last season. We was almost just reliant on luck coming our way, and we ran out of luck from the end of last season, and that's shown. And that's why we didn't go up. We need to. You know, help ourselves and remain a good quality side, which is what we are. We're a good quality side, but we're not playing the brand of football that we should be playing or the level of performances that should be coming through. And we're not getting that just uh, just right now. So I'm hoping that we're not just waiting for this mythical second gear that never come around last season uh, and we produce the goods quickly. Because, like I say, we need, we need to improve our performances massively if we do want to, you know, be be taken seriously as title contenders for this league um, so so yeah I think it's good that you know I think a lot of players did have an off day against Rochdale but we did manage to get the results so that's the only real thing I could say about it my man of the match would be John McLaughlin purely for the save that kept us in it and again Rochdale fans I think you will be absolutely fine uh, the brand of football you play are absolutely excellent and you definitely deserved something from that game uh, and I do I almost felt guilty when the full-time whistle went because you really did play very well. 
But that is it, guys. So, you know, to, to, to sum up, improvements in the performance definitely needed. You know, if we end up going through the season winning every game but playing shit, then, of course, I'm going to take it. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'll, I'll take it. But it would just be nicer to see a better performance on the pitch as well as the results. But that is it, guys. If you have enjoyed the video, please hit the like button for me. It would be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay. Jump it!